So I picked up this 2012 Yamaha Apex. I got this thing for $1,200. The seller was riding it and a stud flew off and made a hole in the heat exchanger and he didn't know it. So eventually he could smell something burning and this thing was overheating. Looks like it's coming out. That broke off. Right, so spark is not the issue. These wires are kind of in the way. You can see that's melted. And try to fish these plugs out of here. See where they broke off. Yeah, we got compression. All right, welcome back. We are working on the 2012 Yamaha Apex 1000 today. And this one's pretty nice. This is 2012, so it's got the power steering. It's got over 150 horsepower, and it's supposed to go over 100 miles an hour. Um, we got it for so cheap, $1,200, because the previous owner overheated it, and he said he couldn't get it to fire back up. So what first happened was a stud came off, hit the heat exchanger, the whole sled overheated, he could smell burning, so he took off the uh, oil cap. The dipstick was melted, and then he looked at the crank position sensor because the code popped up on the, on the display here, and uh, he replaced the crank position sensor because that was melted, which was probably throwing off the spark. And uh, he said that he went to the coils because he still couldn't get it started. And he took out the coil and it ripped right in half. And this is kind of what that looked like. You can see it just broke right in half into the spark plug hole. So last video we took apart the spark plugs and fished them out of the head. That was super fun. It took forever. We finally got them all out and we're able to check compression. All cylinders have good compression except for one. The one is a little iffy. It's still high, but still not as high as I'd like. So today, we are going to put all new spark plugs in. We've got all new plugs. We've got all new coils right over here. Brand new coils for it. We had to get four, because this is a four cylinder. And then we got a new crank position sensor. Because we saw on the cam cover that this one was a little bit melted. You can see the plastic melting there. And this actually senses the cam and tells which uh, spark plug to fire. So if that is not sensing correctly, it will spark at the wrong time. So we're gonna be replacing everything today and hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get really lucky here and get this thing to fire up and it will run perfectly. <laughs> That's best case scenario. Worst case scenario, we're gonna have to tear down the engine. So hopefully it doesn't come to that, but it might. <laughs> So let's get going with this video and uh, see what happens. All right, so as you guys can see, all the cams look good, everything looks good. What we're gonna do is get the valve cover back on. We've gotta get the gasket back on, the valve cover, and we can get this sensor replaced before we do that. All right, let's get this off of here. So the new one I bought was used. It says it's off of a running machine. I didn't go with a brand new one because they were from Canada. It was gonna take forever to ship, so. I bought a used one. This is what the new one looks like. It doesn't look that much different, but you can see this one's melted and that one's not. <laughs> so hopefully that's going to work for us. Let's get that stuck in there. And it definitely smells like burning plastic. So it definitely got hot. So maybe it wrecked the sensor.
got the gasket on the cam cover here so we're gonna be putting that on all right this is a little tricky to get on Let's see if we can get this wire out of the way here. It's definitely a tight fit. All right, intake is back on. Everything's hooked up. Got the gas line hooked up, wiring hooked up. So let's get the coils in and the spark plugs in next. Let's open these up. These I bought brand new, not used. Like I said before, all four of them were $150. They're not, they're not super cheap, but if they work, that would be definitely worth it. So we will see. We're gonna put a little bit of uh, grease on here so they don't get stuck again. have some dialectic grease here. I'm going to put on these spark plugs. I have to pick up new spark plugs today. They're coming in today, but for the time being we're going to use the, uh, the used ones here. So Put a little bit on the threads and uh, on here. Alright, plugs and coils going in.
All right, we got all the coils hooked up, all the spark plugs in, all um, greased up so everything's good to go. And uh, now we can get the battery in and the panel's back on and uh, we'll see if this thing fires up. Really hope this works. <laughs> all right, here we go, moment of truth. Will she fire up? Wants to go. Let's see if we're getting any fuel to the carbs here. It wants to go. Just is not going. Hmm. We're getting fuel. I can see it spraying in. Does not want to go. We're going to check everything over and make sure everything's sparking. All right, we're sparking pretty good. Let's see what happens now. More fuel down there. This 
Spark plug looked good in the plugs. I don't think they're followed out, but they could be because there's oil down the cylinders from the valve cover leaking down there. So there might just be a ton of oil. Um, but it sounded like it was going to clear up and start here. It's close. Wants to go. Hmm. <laughs> a little bit more fuel down there. I think we're getting close here. Let's see. Of course the battery dies. I can tell we're getting close. It's like clearing out the cylinders. All right, come on baby, fire up. Getting really close. We've got an engine light coming on now. Let's see. Engine light pops up. Not sure what is going on there. Let's see. The 22, I believe, is just the uh, air sensor. All right, I've been working on this for about an hour and uh, my battery keeps on dying. But I got to fire up a couple different times where I could rev it out completely and that would shut off once I lay up the throttle. So we went to the store and picked up the spark plugs that I had ordered up a while back. So we're gonna put all new plugs in and see if that makes a difference. I'm thinking maybe we've got a full plug on one of the cylinders, possibly. So we'll see. See what happens here. Open these guys up and uh, we'll install those. Got five brand new ones. So we'll put some grease on those and uh, get those fitted up. The other possibility that could be happening is bad fuel. So we might siphon out the gas tank as well. I don't know if you put like a stabilizer in there and it's just really old fuel. Um, I know this happened last season, so it's at least a year old. Alright, so here's what the old plugs look like. They don't look that bad. 
Your plug going in. All right, we've got all four brand new plugs in. Let's see if this thing fires up. It was fold out plugs the whole time. That's crazy. That is insane. <laughs> Fired right up. And before this, I tested compression on every single cylinder. Every single cylinder was above 150. So I think we're gonna be golden. That is crazy. <laughs> so all the spark plugs were sparking. I guess one wasn't sparking inside the cylinder. See if she fires right back up. I wonder if we followed the plugs again. I wonder if something in the gas is causing it to fall out. That's weird. Leaking some oil. Right there. Where is that coming from? It's coming from the valve gasket still. We'll have to see. But I don't like that. Where would that be coming from? All right, so we took the plate off down here, and uh, I thought at first it was the oil drain plug, but I fouled it up, and the last spot that I see oil is right down here. So this sensor was right in there, and I think it was going by those threads and pushing up through there. So we are going to put a little tape around the threads Twist that back in and see if that holds because that's definitely where the highest point of the oil is so it's got to be coming out of there all right let's see if we got rid of the oil leak start this thing back up
see any leaking. Nothing yet. Says code 55. Got rid of the oil leak. Now we've got a engine code coming up. 65. All right, looking on the forum here, it says code 65 is knock sensor. Um, so that means um, it's lower octane gas and ECU retards timing to protect engine from sparking. Um, from spark knocking. Check fuel quality, it may also be ethanol issue in the fuel. Um, everyone says there could be water in the fuel, so change the, the fuel, which maybe that's why these spark plugs were fouled out. So let's uh, siphon out this old gas, get some fresh stuff in there. Hopefully we get rid of that uh, 65 engine code that pops up. Hopefully there's not a whole lot in here. I think there might be though. All right, there's probably 10 gallons of gas in there. We siphoned it all out. Let's add some fresh fuel. Fire it up, see if she fires. Looks like we did not get rid of the code. This is uh, 65 still. And this is F-000. So we'll have to look into that. But uh, yeah, code did not go away. I wonder if that means the fuel is low. All right, that just means small fuel. Not a big deal. We got fired up. It's not smoking anymore. as much. Sounds a lot better now. No leaking oil. That looks good. Let this thing warm up for a little bit. No leaking. Oh yeah. All right, 
looks like the code came back. Got the 65 code back. And the knock sensor is a sensor I took out that was leaking oil everywhere, right down here. So that's the knock sensor, so. Yeah, um, I don't know if that's faulty or if there's a knock causing it to go off. All right, it's the next day. We let the batteries charge up for a little bit. Both jumpers are now charged up and we got the battery charged up, so we should be good to go. I was doing a bunch of research on this thing and it sounds like plug fouling is very easy to do on this thing. If you start this thing up and you don't let it warm up properly to where the light is off, I'll show you guys here quick. If that red light does not go off and you shut it off, you will follow all the plugs. And there's a lot of instances where this happens. So everyone that owns one of these says you have to ride them if you start them or you let it warm up until that light goes off. I can't believe you can follow plugs that quickly and they're 30 bucks for a set of four. warm up until the light goes off. Light's still on. I think it's pouring out of here again. Yeah, it's still pouring out oil everywhere. All right, that oil leak is still coming from the knock sensor. It's pushing up through, I think where the threads meet the engine there. So we're gonna have to use some Loctite or something, some sealing agent, so that doesn't happen. So we're gonna take that back out, clean that up really good, and see what's going on. All right, we've got the sensor out here. I was taking a closer look at it, and when it was running, oil was coming up through the cracks right where the switch end was connected. So I think there's O-ring gaskets in there that keep that from leaking. And what I think happened is this engine got so hot that it wrecked those gaskets in there or wrecked the seal. So these now just spin freely. So what I did was took some super glue and glued around the seals there. And hopefully that locks everything up and uh, doesn't allow oil to escape from there. Because if you turn this around, there's a little hole right there that oil gets pushed through. And uh, it was just pushing right through those cracks and that's where the oil leak was coming from. So I think we need a new knock sensor here. All right, so I found the same size thread and it would be a spark plug. So we took a spark plug, put some gasket maker around it, and uh, we screwed the spark plug in. So we're hoping that uh, seals off that oil. Um, we're gonna be running it without a knock sensor for a little bit, hopefully it runs. And then we'll have to order up a new one because I don't think that's gonna work.
All right, just gonna top up the oil here since we uh, lost a lot from the knock sensor. Just dump a little bit in there. So we're gonna do it without screwing the uh, plug in here. Let's see where we're at. All right, right between the low and the high mark. We'll run it for a bit and see where we're at, but that looks pretty good for now. All right, here we go. We're gonna start this thing up. It'll probably leak oil everywhere, but uh, we'll still take it for a little ride. Let's see if it has any power here. Hopefully it fires up. We'll have to go in reverse first. Alright, surprisingly, it moves pretty good. Um, the code came up on it. I'll show you guys. Code 65. So we're having that same issue. And obviously, that code came up because it's unplugged. Because <laughs> we've got the spark plug in there right now for the uh, um, engine knock sensor. So we're going to have to order up a new one of those. Um, if that comes on, it limits the, the throttle response so it won't go over 3000 RPM. And you can watch the needle. It like won't go over 3,000 RPM, so it's not going to go very fast with that uh, knock sensor out of there. But I'm really surprised it moves as good as it does, and it's not even leaking oil that bad. Thought for sure oil would be leaking really badly out of there, but uh, that spark plug must have plugged up that hole pretty good. 
So if we can get a new NOx sensor, I think we're gonna be in business here. Didn't look like it was overheating or anything. Let's just quick see what it looks like again here. It says the temperature sensor's still on though, so I don't know what's going on with that. All right, so the symbol right there, right here that turns red, that was staying on, that's the low coolant reservoir light. So if the coolant's low, um, that light will come on, and that's usually just to stay on until it's warmed up. So once that's warmed up, you can go. And right now it looks like it's not on. Yep, see it turned off, so the machine must be warm enough to go. What's up? You guys missed it, but uh, the overheating sensor came on. I think it was the coolant. All right, so let's check out the coolant. I believe that's what that uh, that code was that popped up. It was just like a little engine symbol. I'll see if I can find it in the manual. All right, looking at the manual, that's the symbol that popped up. So that looks like it says it's coolant temperature warning indicator. If the engine overheats, the coolant temperature warning indicator and the warning light come on. When this occurs, stop the engine immediately and allow the engine to cool down. And then check the coolant level. Alright, we had to take off the ignition panel here to get to the coolant reservoir. Now we're going to add a little coolant to there. I don't think this was bled properly. Yeah, this thing was really low on coolant.
knives popping up. 65 and 85. Alright, so you guys are probably going to think I'm really stupid, but this was actually an oil pressure sensor. It was not the, uh, the knock sensor. They look just alike, but uh, this one actually has a hole in it right there for oil pressure. And that's why that failed, because it was pumping oil through it. <laughs> I was wondering, I'm like, why is the knock sensor have oil going to it? But yeah, that would make sense. So the code 85 is actually saying that it's not plugged in to the sensor and that it's not working. So I think they'll still run with code 85. Code 30 means that the oil pressure is bad and that didn't come on. So obviously that's going to come on um, because we don't have it plugged in. But now I am curious as to why this code 65 is coming up because we should have the knock sensor in here still. So I'm not sure where it is on this machine. I'll have to look into it a little bit more. But maybe that's just faulty too. Let's see if we've got enough cooling in here now. Will that run for a little bit? still pretty hot. I think we still have to fill it up a little bit more. All right, we got this thing back together. Let's see if it continues to overheat here. So I think we fixed the coolant issue here. That's just burning off all the coolant I spilled. We don't have any symbol up for the coolant overheating, so I think we, we fixed that problem. It was just really low on coolant for some reason. So I think the guy just never blood it. But um, yeah, I'm not comfortable riding it too far without that oil pressure sensor in there. I don't wanna blow it up and have like low oil pressure or something, so. Um, we are going to wait to ride it anymore until we get the oil pressure sensor plugged in and fixed. The other one just 
went out. So we'll have to order that up and replace that. But otherwise, this thing is running perfectly. Zero issues. Really, really fast. Really powerful. Um, doesn't bog down at all. Has pretty much unlimited power. So I am really, really shocked that this thing is actually running and driving right. <laughs> we got it for 1200 bucks. What a great deal. So I was expecting like a full engine rebuild or something, but... We got extremely lucky with this one, and uh, it ended up being the coils and the spark plugs. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for next video. We'll get the sensor for this thing and take it for a nice long ride. So, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video, and until next time, we are out.